Hi, it's Dorothy Guiney with Scrapbooking Quebec, and this week I'm joining the Punched Out Thursday gang. We share ideas every Thursday on what to do with your punches. I'm going to put links to Ronnie's, Kathy's, and Krista's channels below, and each one of us has a really different approach to using our punches. Here's what I'm going to be using. I have paper from the Maggie Holmes Heritage Collection. That wood grain is from Stampin' Up, as well as that jar of flowers bundle. I also have some other punches. I have a tag punch, two different leaf punches, as well as two small flower punches. I did do a bit of preparation in advance, so I prepared a frame style foundation with three sheets of paper, and I gutted two of them. I will use the paper I gutted from behind the foundation page elsewhere on my layout. Actually, I already matted my photos with some of it. I double matted these photos and I will put measurements for all of that on the screen later on. I don't usually do this, but I'm going to show you this pack of paper because I'm kind of excited about it. It's new from Stampin' Up! It's called In Good Taste and it's full of wood grains, denim, other textures like cement and brick. I'm always looking for paper like this and I was just really thrilled that they finally came out with something 12 by 12 like this. It goes really well with that Maggie Holmes Heritage Collection and I also have on my desk a pile of scraps including a piece of vellum that I do plan to use a bit later on. As always, I also have a whole pile of tools on my desk so I have this basket of punches. That bundle there, that's new from Stampin' Up! as well. For the layout, I plan to use the jar, but if you stay around till the end of the video, I will show you a card I made with it where I use the flowers and all of that. There's a tray full of other goodies, enamel dots, twine, as well as alphas. Now what I'm going to do is continue preparing my foundation page. So the page I'm going to do today is one of my you know, favorite go-to designs. It's basically an L design and I'm going to be doing a backwards L, I guess. So I'm cutting down five strips of paper right now. Three of them measure two inches wide and the other two are more narrow, in and around one inch and three quarters of an inch. Like I said, I will put measurements for all of this on the screen. So basically, I'm going to take these five strips and kind of cross them so that they form a backwards L. And with the three wider strips, the two inch strips, I'm going to turn those into tags. So that delightful tag topper punch from Stampin' Up! can cut tags in three different widths. So I'm doing it at the most wide, two inches, but you can also do it at one and a half inches and one inch. And what's fun about it is that you can cut the length that you want. So in this case, these are more borders than tags, I guess. So I'm trimming them all down. And those two narrow strips, I'll trim those down as well. And so that is basically going to form my L. And when I create this type of design, my idea is to fill in the middle part of that L with photos and other page elements. Basically, I take the page, divide it in half on the diagonal, and fill in that bottom diagonal. So the top half is going to be kind of left a little bit more airy. I will put something in the top left later on, but just to something small. So I'm placing my photos in there and you're going to notice, uh, first of all, what I'm going to do is take the main photo and I'm going to back it in two more layers of scrap cardstock. As you can see, it was a past mixed media mistake. And what that's going to do is just raise up the photo a little bit. I'm not adding foam adhesive, but it kind of almost acts like a foam adhesive. So I'm adhering my borders down to the page, creating my backwards L. I'll finish off those tags later on towards the end of this video. Um, I'll use reinforcers and add some twine and all that kind of stuff. Now you may notice the horizontal strips that I'm putting on the page, the smaller ones. When I was first placing it, I had them on top of the tag, but I just moved them up a bit. And the reason why I did that is because I found that there was trapped white space between the focal point photo, the larger photo, 
and the tag. And that can cause problems when you're designing your page because you end up trying to fill in those spots in between the photos and page elements and it ends up junking up your page. Now what I'm going to do is start decorating my page. So I'm going to stamp myself a mason jar from that jar of flowers stamp set. I do two just in case I make a mistake, but I'm going to let it dry because I find when you stamp on vellum it stays wet a bit longer. And then I'm taking this twig stamp, also part of the same collection, and I'm just stamping it on a white cardstock. Those are the stems of a flower bouquet. So then I punch it out with that jar. And now what I'm going to do is punch out a whole bunch of different little flowers and leaves and different stuff like that. I'm using two small flower punches and two leaf punches, but to be perfectly honest, all you really need here is one. So I'm doing it in a few different colors. And what I'll do is create a bouquet that comes out of this mason jar. Like I said, there is a set of stamps that you can do it, but because this is punched out Thursday, I felt like using my punches. But also, if you hang around till the end, you'll see how I actually use those flower stamps. So I've got a pile of decorations I'm creating here, and I get out this cat punch. I find a cat punch if you do pet page is really useful because basically you can pair it with any general themed supplies and turn it into a pet page. There is a dog punch as well. It's just very, very useful, I find. So as you can see, I punched out my mason jar. It had dried and now I'm showing you my title, which is a Heidi Swap letters and I put them on wax paper. And now what I'm gonna do is build two embellishment clusters. The main one's gonna be where you see that viewfinder wheel. And I find that something like that or a doily or something really useful for starting an embellishment cluster. Basically, it's the foundation of an embellishment cluster. It works really well to have something big. And on top of that, I'm creating my mason jar with the bouquet of flowers. You may have noticed I punched out a two inch circle and put it in the middle of that viewfinder wheel. And I'm just playing around with different small pieces to create an embellishment cluster. So I have that jar, I adhered the vellum on top of it. I added the leaves, I added the flowers, I'm adding small circles to each one of those flowers. Those are two small circle punches and I'm more or less happy with that. I know the cat's going to go down there as well and I also want to create a small embellishment cluster in the top left hand corner. That one's going to be a lot smaller. That's where the title's going to be but just a few flowers. When I create embellishment clusters I do like to have one main one and then a smaller one. So that's what I'm doing here. I decide to come in with that sprig punch, which I had already punched out in green and add some white, almost like baby's breath in a flower bouquet. So I have a whole bunch of pieces. I played around with it and now I have to start adhering it to the page because I find at one point when I have all of these different pieces, it becomes very difficult to continue my layout unless I start adhering. I just have too many small pieces on my page. So I got out this kind of wax paper adhesive that you just place the small element on the paper and the picks up the adhesive because those sprigs were really fine so I found it easier and I'm just building the flower bouquet so some of them I am adding foam adhesive just to add a bit of dimension within the bouquet and other ones are flat to the page I also added the dots to the middle of the flowers that could easily be replaced with enamel dots probably easier actually anyway I do have those small flower punches so I'm just playing around with the leaves and adding stuff I am adding a few layers of cardstock behind that cat just to give it a little bit more body and I am adding some foam adhesive there and now I'm going to start creating the cluster in the top left hand corner. Again, like I said, I'm just putting a few flowers there and the title. I just start putting the title down and then what I'll do is stop the video, continue with the title, and then finish with the final touches. Um, 
Again, some of these flowers I am putting with foam adhesive. You may notice paws is lined up right under pasta, and at the very end, I end up moving the word pause over a bit to the right. I tend to line things up and then afterwards I look at it and think, what am I doing here? Anyway, I moved it a bit towards the right. You'll see that in the still photos at the end. Now what I'm doing is adding reinforcers to those tags. So I take a hole punch, a circle punch, and then create myself a little ring. And I like to do this towards the end of a layout simply because sometimes at the end of the layout it's useful to add a hit of color somewhere just to balance things out. And in this case, I felt the page could use a little bit more of that gold yellow color. So that's what I chose for the reinforcers. And now I'm adding this braided linen twine. It's an old product by Stampin' Up. I don't think it's still there anyway. And I am adding it to the tags and I will adhere it with a bit of uh, glue dots later on. Now what you see me doing is creating a paw. So to create a paw with punches, all you need is a heart punch turn it upside down, and then you punch out a few circles and put it around the bottom of the heart and it creates a paw. Obviously, I'm making a really tiny one, but you can do it in whatever size you want. Now, what I'm going to do is simply add a few enamel dots to both of the clusters and then I'm pretty much finished. Now what I will do right after this before showing you the stills is show you the card I made with that jar of flowers bundle by Stampin' Up because I felt kind of guilty for not showing you the flower stamp on this layout. So I'm going to show you the card here that it's kind of fun because there are actual these shaker jars that you can buy with this collection as well. So I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but I put sequins in the shaker. I'm showing you them right now. And anyway, so basically you punch out the white and then you um, put the shaker pocket behind it and add your sequins and that's it. So there is my final page. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd be thrilled if you gave me a thumbs up. I'd also love to hear from you if you have any questions or comments. And also, if you haven't subscribed to Scrapbooking Quebec, I would be really thrilled if you subscribed. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the other ladies. Their links are listed below. And have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.